I am going to be planting some sweet peas today um, in pots and in the ground or in raised beds, maybe also in the ground. But I am at Home Depot and then we'll be going to a uh, local nursery called Ritter's. Um, and I will be taking you along and showing you what I pick up. Hello, so it is the next day and I have been outside working for a little bit today. Um, it's pretty cold and windy and chilly, um, but I have gone ahead and potted up, if you can see, my first uh, wine barrel, made my first sweet pea obelisk out of forage branches around the property. Um, I don't know the, I, there are some old, um, apple tree branches from a wild apple tree around and then there's some other twigs that I'm not sure what they are but it's a wild flowering um, shrub <clears throat> small tree and I have several of them on, around our property and then um, I have not yet planted the second plant I'm going to do that with you guys show you the soil mix that I use for my sweet peas and how I put together a very raw organic um, sweet pea obelisk that is so imperfect and just natural and whimsical and that's sort of the goal. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got some gloves on and I am going to be showing you the blend of soil that I use for growing my sweet peas. So you may have remembered from yesterday I picked up some three cubic foot compressed bales of raised bed mix um, from this brand GNB or Gardener and Bloom. And I am not, so I will get bulk raised bed mix. I will buy from other brands like Espoma if I can find it. It's just kind of what I can find and what's available to me. Um, but what has worked out perfectly, so this is a wine barrel that I picked up yesterday at Home Depot. These do not come with any drain holes. So what we did was to go ahead and drill five drain holes on the bottom of each one of these containers. Drainage is super important. So if you're, whatever container you're growing and if you're not growing directly in the ground, you're gonna wanna make sure that they have uh, proper drainage. So one three cubic foot compressed bale of raised bed mix was enough to fill half of each one. So I was able to split one and fill half of each wine barrel, which is perfect because I'm gonna to top that with another one and a half cubic foot bag of purely compost or any um, good quality compost, um, organic compost that you can get your hands on. Sweet peas are such hungry little plants. They're such heavy feeders that you really can't overdo it in terms of nutrients. Um, they're probably uh, one of the flowers and plants that you're going to make the absolute richest amount of soil preparation for. And it's well, well worth the effort and the time um, and the money because you're just gonna see the results in your sweet peas. So lastly, 
I have a bag here from of steer manure. This was I picked this up at Home Depot, and I went ahead and already put half of it in the other container, and I will be putting the other half in this wine barrel, and then I'm going to be mixing this all together with a shovel. Okay, so with a shovel or a pitchfork or garden fork, you're just going to try to blend all of this goodness together. And the other amendment that you're going to want to be sure to add is either bone meal and or biotone or some other good starter fertilizer that has mycorrhizal powder, um, alfalfa meal, but if you can't do anything else, bone meal is a wonderful amendment. So when I've planted in the ground, I have um, dug a six to 12 foot trench with a pickaxe or with a shovel where I'm gonna be planting my sweet peas, fill that entire trench with compost, steer manure, bone meal, mix it together. And that's the, um, the mixture that I use for planting in the ground. And I wanna kind of replicate that as much as I can in containers so, th so that the soil is as rich and nutrient dense as possible right out of the gate. Okay, so then I'm just gonna go in and break up any clumps, any big clumps that are left over. Make sure it's all nice and well incorporated. So if you can't get a hold of steer manure, any well rotted manure will do. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and level that off and I'm gonna add my biotone. Okay, so I've got some biotone from Espoma. This is full of really good things like bone meal, alfalfa meal, mycorrhiza powder, all sorts of things to help the sweet peas get off to a good start. And for a, a container this size, I will add about two cups of fertilizer. One to two cups. And go ahead and mix that in. Okay, so now I'm gonna start building the teepee. And it's, remember, keep in mind, if you're doing this yourself with bound foraged branches, it's not going to look perfect. Um, and that's okay, that's, that's what we want. We want something that's imperfect and charming and magical and whimsical and all of those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to leave about a two inch um, space in between where I have the frame of the obelisk and the sides of the container so I have enough room to plant my seeds. So I'm gonna start with these apple branches. Thank you. Good working. Now let's get them clean over here. Yeah, I'm a no good helper. Okay, so once I have the basic frame, I'm gonna take some twine and cut a piece and just try to tie off roughly at the top. Um, of the height that I want. Okay, so now that I've got the basic framework done, I am going to go ahead and take the little side branches and start winding them around the obelisk to kind of just get some nice wrap motion. And that will give the sweet peas levels to cling on to. There are so many ways to do this, by the way. Um, and I se seem to change what I do from year to year based on just what I'm feeling that year. Um, you can just buy 
uh, willow obelisks, so you can buy bamboo obelisks, um, different kind of expandable teepee trellises, those work great. Um, whatever it is that you can find or want, um, you, can, you can do it and sweet peas will, will grow on it just fine. So to get my first wrap going, I'm putting these branches together and I'm going to put them in at an angle and try to get them nicely planted. And the other piece I have is floral wire. Um, it comes in these little packs like this and then it has this its own little cutter and you just pinch and it will cut off a piece. So I'll have a piece in hand. This is about six or seven inches. And again, I'm just gonna take the branches, twist them, braid them. And it's really important that you wanna use branches that are green, that are more flexible. Because if you don't use branches that are green and flexible, they're going to be nearly impossible to do this with. So when I kind of complete a turn, I'm going to take the floral wire and attach this. I'm going to kind of crisscross and twist the wire over itself until it feels nice and secure. Then I'll wrap it around the branch again and twist over in the back. Twist, twist, make my way around. Need another piece of wire. I'm going to keep twisting and then attach it to another of the main structural stems. I'm going to continue to grab, bring in some more branches. and find another spot to tie this in. So lastly, I'm just gonna be tying in some twigs, just in some random bits and just kind of use up everything that I grabbed, tying it all together, trying to give so the sweet peas as much surface area as possible to climb on. Okay, so that is a very wonky and wild sweet pea obelisk or wigwam, um, but I think that it's gonna work and Again, it's nice because it's basically free except for some twine and some floral wire and um, it's something that you can change from year to year. So the last thing I'm going to do is set this up to be on my drip system. I have quarter inch drip tube which has emitters every nine inches. If you can get a hold of the kind that has emitters every six inches, that's great. I may even um, find it necessary in the season to do two loops of this around the pot. Um, but this is also in a, in a location where I can easily supplemental um, water it with my hose. Um, but this should do, this should be okay. I'll just monitor the water needs. In addition to being incredibly hungry, sweet peas are incredibly thirsty. They like good drainage, but they like a lot of water. So I've gone ahead and measured the length of the drip tube I need for this wine barrel. And normally what I do is fish a solid 
piece of quarter inch drip tubing through the bottom in one of the drain holes uh, and tie that into the drip tubing at the top. But these are incredibly heavy and they will not be on feet. So I don't want to crimp my drip hose and not be able to water these containers efficiently. So for that reason, I'm not worried about seeing a little bit of tube down the backside. Actually, these wine barrels have a little notch, which will be perfect. I'm gonna tie it around so that this can, uh, the tube from the back can run up through this little notch and I'll be good to go. I won't even worry about it. So the other thing that I need is a little quarter inch barbed tee to make, to connect my loop and to have, so I'll connect the loop on these sides of the tee and I'll leave this part to connect into the solid tubing that will connect into the main drip system. Just a little fresh square cut. I remember the first time I ever used drip tubing and it was cold like this and I was trying to set up drip tubing in my yard and I went inside crying and frustrated. I think Eve was a newborn baby. And what you don't, what you might not know if you've never used drip tubing before is that if it is cold, it is incredibly stiff and hard to put the emitters in or the connectors in. So leave it in the sun if you've got a sunny day and, it, and let it warm up and soften in the sun for a little bit and it will be much more pliable and easy to use. Okay, so those are both set up with their drip and I will go ahead and start planting the sweet peas. So I've gone ahead and I have soaked my sweet pea seeds, not overnight, but for eight or so hours in little containers and labeled them with my industrial Sharpie on the plastic labels. And some people soak their sweet pea seeds, some people don't. Some people nick them or use a little file to help break down the hard seed coat. I've always pre-soaked them and I have had good success doing that, but if you have, you don't have the, the time or the space um, or the desire to do it, you can experiment uh, not doing it. Um, but for the, for the time being, this is what I am continuing to do. And what I'm going to do is plant each one of these sweet pea seeds one inch deep, so about to my knuckle on uh, my pointer finger and about six inches apart. They are typically plant planted six to eight inches apart. I kind of fudge it a little bit when they are in containers like this and maybe creep closer to four inches so I can get as many uh, sweet peas in a container as possible. But um, if you stay within that six inch range, you are good to go. I also wanted to mention I did use some six inch landscape staples to staple down the drip tube just so it won't be moving around or raising up above the soil. I want to have good soil contact so that the water is getting right into the soil. I have about 24 or so different pots inside of sweet peas, different varieties of sweet peas soaking and I'm just going to plant as many as I can fit into each of these containers and then the rest will be going in the kitchen garden on the arches that you saw last year and maybe some in the ground as well. So the first variety I am planting is called Spring Sunshine Champagne. And what I do is I pop in a label where they start and I just poke a hole with my finger 
uh, down to the knuckle. And I'm going to go ahead and drain out the water. Actually, I'll drain it out into this potted hellebore. And start planting the sweet peas. So this next variety I'm planting is called Sunshine Mid Blue. And again, I'm gonna pop the label down where this variety starts and plant one inch deep, about four and a half inches apart for the purposes of this container. Okay, so I've gone ahead and planted all of the seeds in the container. I'm going to water them in well, and I'm going to continue to water them every few days or just monitoring the soil level, keeping it moist, never letting it dry out until this is able to be set up on my drip system later on in the spring when the weather is consistently warm and the danger of most frost has passed. Okay, so now I'm gonna be planting the second wine barrel and the two varieties I'm planting here are Arrow One, which has been an incredibly prolific and hardy variety for me. Wherever I've planted it in my garden, it seems to self-sow and I, and I find these little flowers that uh, pop up all over my yard and I have grown to love it even more for that reason. I feel like it, it likes it here, so I wanna to continue to grow it. So a quick note that I wanted to add is if you are able to source the quarter inch drip tubing with emitters every six inches, that is the perfect ideal spacing for sweet peas. So when you go to plant them, you would plant your seed lining up with an emitter hole so that that water is going directly to the seed, directly to the plant, and you are minimizing water loss. That is a perfect ideal situation. you guys really enjoyed this video and it gave you an idea of how you could plant sweet peas in your garden. I will be going through my garden tomorrow and planting the rest of the seeds and hopefully I'll be able to bring you guys along for that in another video and show you how I plant them in my arches and in the ground. I want to um, kind of go over a little bit why I plant them this way and instead of starting them indoors, which many gardeners do and have amazing success doing so. So I have trialed sweet peas all sorts of ways. I have started them indoors and potted them up and planted plants out into the garden in the spring. I have planted directly into the soil, seeds that I've just soaked overnight or eight plus hours. I have pre-sprouted seeds between damp paper towels and left them for several days up to a week until those seeds sprouted and then you just plant those sprouted seeds into the soil. That way you're not, you know you're only planting viable seeds. However, you have to be really careful with that method that you don't leave them too long and then they rot and you lose that seed. That's really unfortunate. That's happened to me before because time just gets away from you sometimes. Um, but what I have found for where I live, 
is that when I plant sweet peas directly in the ground and let them come up with in their own time and I let them be immediately acclimated to my environment, which my environment is high wind, very flexible temperatures. I get a lot of sunshine. When, when there is sunshine, we get very harsh sun because we are on a hilltop. And so it just seems like our sun here is way more intense than other areas around us. So that's a little bit about our microclimate. So when I have planted plants out into the spring, typically they have shocked and some of them have shocked pretty badly to where they were set back two or three weeks. So by the time the seeds I planted in the same year grew up, they, they had already caught up with the plants that I planted out as plants. So it kind of seemed like a, a loss and a waste of time for me to start plants when it all sort of evens out in the end and the seeds that I planted directly in the ground, their foliage was greener, stronger, healthier looking overall, and their flowers were bigger and more fragrant and healthier. The plants that I had planted, because it is so intense with wind and sun where I am, the flowers got a mottled appearance to them which I wasn't expecting, whereas the sweet peas that I planted a seed into the soil, they were true to color and they just looked like healthier flowers overall. Now, please hear me when I say, this is just my experience. This is in no way a hard and fast rule. There are so many gardeners all over the world who start sweet peas indoors in the fall and winter and they plant out their plants in the spring and they have amazing success. And if you've done it that way and it works for you in your climate and your conditions, then by all means do it. This is just how I do it and have found success. And every year is different. Last year, my sweet peas were set back because we had record breaking 108 degree, 111 degree temperatures in June, which is pretty much unheard of where I live. And the year before and the year before that, we had very cool Junes with lots of rain and cool days and overcast skies and the sweet peas flourished as a result. Whereas some other plants, that's not their favorite, but the sweet peas loved it and did great. They had longer stems, they had better fragrance, all of those things are affected by the weather. So we will just have to wait and see what 2022 brings for the sweet peas this year. I will go ahead and keep you guys updated as they sprout and grow and we will see. And I will let you know as I fertilize them. Typically I start fertilizing them once they have put up several sets of true leaves and continue to fertilize until they start producing flowers but I will go ahead and keep you guys updated as that process unfolds. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.